Mercy Killing, The Adventist Solution The topic of this article, authored by Andy Roman, is something I have covered more than once before, but this is the second time I am using some of his clips to illustrate what took place on October 14, 2019. Please, watch this video and tell me where both Andy Roman and I have gone wrong in analyzing the content of our Adventist new document on abortion titled Statement on the Biblical View of the Unborn Life and its Implications for Abortion. Even though this statement has more Bible verses, a stronger language in favor of life and states that abortion is out of harmony with God's plan for human life, unfortunately it also says that abortion can be a matter of individual conscience when it comes to certain rare and extreme cases. It states in one place that abortion is a violation of the sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill, but then in another place it allows people under rare circumstances to follow their conscience and have abortions. According to the new document, Abortion is a personal decision whenever a pregnancy has been classified as a fatal prospect or a life-threatening birth anomaly. These are presumed cases in which a physician believes that a baby is going to die anyways, whether in the womb or shortly after birth. In other words, the statement says that individuals can directly abort a living baby that is probably going to die anyways, even before it actually dies. How is this any different from euthanasia and mercy killings? Euthanasia is basically defined as ending the life of someone who is going to die anyways. It is a tragedy if a baby dies naturally in the womb or out of the womb, but it is murder if we end their life prematurely. There is no gray area on this. These exceptions that allow for abortion in Section 6 are being done for middle ground, political expediency, and not on the basis of moral principle. Do you believe that the position of the Adventist Church is in line with what the Bible teaches about the killing of unborn human beings? Take the case of Down Syndrome children. No Adventist I know would consider taking the life of a child affected by this congenital defect. If it is morally wrong to deprive a Down Syndrome child of life after it is born, how can we justify doing so prior to the birth experience? How can the Adventist Church justify the abortion of Down Syndrome children before birth? Our Adventist Church is against euthanasia, but justifies the killing of unborn children with birth defects. How can we explain this? The argument that pregnant women should be free to choose between life and death for the unborn is deceptive. Would we apply the same argument to rape, or stealing, or the sexual abuse of children? Did Jesus approve this in his encounter with the woman caught in adultery? Did he say to the Pharisees, this woman has the freedom to choose? Did he not tell her, go and sin no more? Isn't this the answer the church should give to those defending the sinful practice of abortion? Section 6 of the Adventist abortion document is a blatant compromise with sin and should be deleted before it is approved by the next general conference session. The Lord cannot bless what he has cursed. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings, and curses. Now choose life, so that you and your children may live. Deuteronomy 30 colon 19